Hi, my name is Glenn Hasselman. I'm just making this video for the free accounting software users to show you guys how to lodge a TFN declaration in free accounting software. So I've been using this um, business that I set up uh, for some payroll demonstrations and I've already set the employee up. Um, so that's done in counterparties and double click on the employee. From there you have a link at the top to payroll details and then from there you have a link through to the TFN declaration. Now I just want to point out this note at the bottom here which says note if you are lodging payroll for this employee using single touch payroll 2 you do not need to lodge this form. So the ATO have said because enough information is coming through with the single touch payroll 2 lodgements they don't need you to lodge the TFN declaration form. Uh, that would cover the vast majority of our users but there are some uh, pay slips that can't be lodged through single touch payroll 2 so um, for them they may need to lodge this form or um, I think you can just lodge it anyway um, even though you don't have to um, so to lodge the form um, just review the information you've entered um, most fields are required fields but for example you know if you've entered the TFN um, obviously you don't need to enter the TFN exemption um, so um, on this page it is it has become a little bit more of a tax information general page um, so there are fields here that are not part of the TFN declaration and therefore don't get lodged with the TFN declaration and and where that um, happens there is a note to say that um, on the details of payment arrangement done a couple payroll videos and this gets used in the payroll um, I didn't select any answers to these two questions which is a student loan and the student loan financial supplement bracket old um, so they are actually required fields so I'm going to have to set them to no um, the student loan financial supplement bracket old that is this is an older version of the TFN declaration form I haven't updated it because I just didn't consider it that important and the ATO is still accepting this version of the form um, but you do have to um, select no and, and that that field is not on the new um, TFN declaration forms um, up top here there's a, a, fit, a question that says pay already terminated your only choice is blank or terminated so um, you can leave that one blank um, this, the next two sections they're not actually lodged with the TFN declaration form. Uh, this pay declaration you've got to set to whether they sign the form or not. Um, I highly recommend you don't let the employees start without giving you a signed TFN declaration form. I'm not entirely sure whether that's a legal requirement or not but just don't let it happen. Um, make sure you get the signed TFN declaration form um, because uh, I have heard stories where um, it was hard to get afterwards um, so uh, then we've got the payer details um, these details get copied in from your my business details page so if there's missing um, things like missing address there um, go and fill that in on your my business details page um, read the declaration and whenever you're lodging stuff um, to the ATO there's going to be a box to tick to agree to the declaration um, if you don't agree to the declaration it won't get lodged it will cause an error um, okay at that stage you then select your machine credential and enter your password and that is the password for the machine credential um, now if you are lodging using a BASOF hosted business file then um, it, it just asks you for your login password again 
okay and then click lodge okay the the software goes away in the background it does the lodge and the page um, here reloads in 20 seconds which is virtually always enough time for it to complete the lodge um, if not it would just refresh again I'm going to scroll back up the top to see the other error messages or in this case a successfully lodged message um, and once it's successfully lodged the document status goes to lodge complete there's a link here to show lodgement message detail and you can um, expand that detail to see the ATO messages if there's an error that should be automatically expanded to show you what the error is okay now that that is lodged um, all these fields are grayed out so I cannot type into them however you might have a situation in which um, um, these details change and you want to um, include the updated details on your single touch payroll lodgements and in that case you click this link here new TFN declaration and that will create a new TFN declaration um, so you'll actually you actually can have multiple TFN declarations let's say the employees address was what changed um, you can um, change that and click save now um, um, so once you've done that these new details will be used on the um, future single touch payroll 2 lodgements if you go to the TFN list which there's a link at the top to get to that um, you'll see that we now have two TFN declarations the one that we lodged and the new one if I double click on the one that we lodged we can see all that information there and that forms a record of what was lodged with the ATO going back to the TFN list I can also click into the um, to the new one with the more up-to-date information and during the course of their employment the employee could give you a new TFN declaration or you might just know that some of these details have changed and, and want to include that new information in your single touch payroll lodgements okay and I think that's just about all there is to know about TFN declaration lodgement I hope the video has been useful to you and thank you for watching